Trump just showed up a while. You know, I try to get Donald Trump, the right, the left, everyone a fair shot. But this thing he keeps pushing is just not true. New York Times live in the past had a problem. On November 13th, they released a letter to the voters. And at no point did they say their coverage was wrong, bad. They did not apologize. They said, after such an erratic and unpredictable election, there are inevitable questions. Did Donald Trump sheer out and out and other news outlets to underestimate the support among American voters? As we reflect on the momentous results in the months of reporting and holding up the seat of it, aimed to rededicate ourselves to the fundamental mission of Times Journalism, and to report America and the world honestly without fear or faith, striving always to understand and reflect all political perspectives and life experiences and the stories that we bring to you, is also to hold the power to account impartially and unflinchingly. We can rely on the New York Times to bring the same fairness, the same level of scrutiny, and the same independence of our coverage of the new president and his team. They're saying, wow, what a crazy election. Also, it notes you, we are going to still keep doing more of the same. They even have issue with the New York Times. They think that they're 100% liars. Maybe they just get stuff wrong sometimes. They lie a little bit. They're the gospel, they're the truth. Whatever your opinion is, nothing in that is an apology. Them saying they're bad, that they were wrong. They were saying, did we underestimate? Because yes, the New York Times famously had a poll where they predicted that Hillary Clinton had a 90% plus chance of winning. Although then that starts a debate of, well, does that even mean you were really wrong? Polls didn't say she will win. They said that she'll probably win. It's a high chance, but the other outcome, there's a, there's a chance. And that's just a statistical truth of predictions, whether it be a presidential race or all of the championships, apparently. That's where I'm going to end that one. Actually, that's where I'm going to end today's show. Of course, whether it be about the last thing I talked about, the first thing, anything in between, I'd love to know your opinion. And remember, if you like this video, you like what I do on this channel, hit that like button. If you do here, hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that little bell thing for when notifications aren't broken, so you get an update when I post these daily video. Also, if you missed yesterday's host of the Brandon Show, you want to catch up, you can click or tap right there to watch that. If you want to see today's brand new behind the scenes vlog, you can click or tap right there to watch that vlog. That's it, of course, as always, my name is Philip Franco. We just get filled in on the old faces, and I'll see you tomorrow. When it's cold out and you didn't dress for the weather and you were far from shelter, you have a crucial decision to make. Should you run or ski to try to warm up, or go slow and avoid the cooling effects of the wind? When it's cold out and you're not moving, the heat you lose goes to heating up the air around you, forming a slightly warmer protective layer so you don't cool off as quickly. But if you're moving, or if it's windy, you're being exposed to some amount of fresh new cold air, more of it the faster you go. You're literally running away from the air you warmed, and so you cool off faster than you stay put. Though once you're going fast enough, the protective layer of air will be pretty much entirely